Bismillah wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulillah my dear wonderful people assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah this is your brother abd salam abu hanifa today is the coach that's going to talk to you in a lot of times we do take decisions we do our calculations we make our istikhara and we go ahead and we take upon us to achieve that is what we want to achieve but in a lot of times years later on down the line or maybe perhaps months or days weeks whatever it is we start kind of like feeling that the choice we made back in time was not actually working for us the way we wanted it to even though at days or at the moment there we thought like we have taken the best example the best decision people usually are really weary when it comes to getting married and that's when they seek istikhara they expect allah to send them jibril in the dream and tell them look don't marry this because it is a y z and a lot of people misunderstand the power of al-istikhara and this is why a lot of people don't understand it this is why a lot of people blame allah or accuse allah or think wrongly of what has come into their own way based on what it is that they did regret is always a friend that we get later on down the line i should not have married this man or i should not have married this woman or i should not have accepted to live in this house or maybe get in business with this one or maybe take this course or i should have done something better got a job or something else these and many other questions always always trigger an emotion which we humans refer to as regret regret what it is that you regret today if you had the opportunity to go back in time where would you go which period of your life would you go back to and start all over again from that day on and move forward was it the day before you got married was it the day before you had a baby what it is go in your mind search in a lot of things in a lot of times where we are today was started back in time and guess what you exactly know when things went on or went off when things went right or went wrong regret is not a proactive feeling with regret you cannot feed a bird you can do absolutely nothing all you can do with regret is kill your time kill your energy kill your mind kill your destiny hate people regret what does regret do to you let me tell you what regret does to you as i said it's an emotion once the emotion gets triggered your body has to respond to that emotion and you know what it does I'm not going to go scientific on you but I'm going to give you something kind of like name them so that we understand what happens to us. Once you get into that regretful mode your body will produce hormones. Let's call them regret hormones. These regret hormones are negative and once the body or once the body has got negative hormones in it it will feel negative. It will act negative. Your eyes will only see negativity. your smell will only smell negativity look at it some day you'll be walking with somebody and then you smell a bad smell and they don't and uh, have you ever asked yourself why it is that you smell the bad smell and they did not because somewhere deep inside you there was a negative hormone called smell the bad or see the bad something happens between your eyes and the eyes with the tens of people because you have those negative regret and negative hormones in your body you always see the negativity in what happens in front of you regret is not a proactive feeling it only really deactivate the positivity in your body and uh, regret is like uh, sitting on a rocking chair i used to love doing this i used to love doing that in the united states i used to have a rocking chair and sit right there on the porch and watching the good old nebraska fields upon fields of open space and i used to just sit there and rock but i used to write so that was not a wasted energy however a lot of people would sit on a rocking chair and that rocking chair's name is regret and as you know sitting on a rocking chair does not take you anywhere it makes you move but you're not moving anywhere else you are just going back and forth back and forth and thinking and killing yourself and the body is producing these negative hormones and then everything around you is so negative that your shaitan closes the grip on you and you start seeing that is no way out today i'm doomed you say to yourself 
Regret, it's a feeling that helps you live in disappointment, sorrow, and remorse. That's what it is, regret. It takes your hand and walks you on a beach called disappointment. When you look at yourself, you see a failure. Guess what your body does? Produces failure hormones. And then you look at yourself and you see sorrow. And guess what? The body produces sorrow hormones and remorse. And you can change nothing from your past. It's gone. Past is gone. You can't. You cannot unmarry the person you are married to now. And you cannot undo your past. It's gone. But today you have a choice. It's either you spend your time with a good friend of old called regret or called remorse, disappointment, sorrow. Regret, my dear wonderful people out there, and you don't deserve it. Regret is merely wishes. You are just wishing, wishing for the empty, wishing for, ah, if I had time to change, how would I change? I wouldn't be here. Guess what? You are here. Deal with it. Regret, it's that feeling where you feel things could have been different. But you are doing nothing to change the past, and the past you cannot change it. Regret is doing things in your mind differently, running them differently, and reality is speaking different to you. This is why you are in a state of confusion. This is why you don't know where your head is, and this is why you don't know where your tail is. Regret, my dear wonderful people, is those things, and you wish for those things that would have been different without an act to cause a difference, that is like wishing you've eaten yesterday's dinner and now you wish you didn't eat it. How much can you undo of last night dinners? And this is just last night. Let me take an example. Let me take you on an example of this one here. I discovered this at a very young age. And then throughout time, I came to see that Islam this beautiful, beautiful religion has actually given the solution. The miserable Muslims of today, the miserable Arabs that don't know their religion, are causing a great deal of sorrow, disappointment to the world. If only we understood Islam as Allah wants us to do that, oh, a no telling what we Muslims would do today. Just like our predecessors, they left their marks and their legacy on every field of science that the West still thrives on today. Yet we have the same religion, yet you have the same pointers, but we're not acting. But let me share with you tonight something that has helped me work with my life. Those who know me, they know that I don't have much sorrow, I don't have much disappointment in my life. And I will share with you tonight this. And I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that it finds a way in your heart, in your actions. If you don't know how to do it, call me, ask me, I'll help you. But you know what? Through all my these pep talks, I realized that Muslims don't want to change. Subhanallah. I used to do the same thing with non-Muslims. And every topic that I posted, there used to be a great discussion of points. And I liked that and I didn't like And this reminds me of that. And this reminds me of that philosopher who said this. It was always a good discussion. And I learned more than I delivered them. It was a good experience. With Muslims today, nothing. It's dead desert. It's a dead Sahara out there. I don't even know if you listen to my pep talks or not. You know what? My life goes on and alhamdulillah I'm getting better every single day. And if you don't listen and you don't act, huh, on the day of al-qiyamah, just watch what you're going to say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's take an example. Let's say alhamdulillah if somebody has diabetes and the very first thing they tell to people that I have diabetes, the typical response from people when they hear that someone has got diabetes or is diabetic, what they say, oh, I'm sorry to hear that. That's the negativity speaking. However, you can turn this reality of you having diabetes or high blood pressure or tension, whatever it is that you got, into something that works for you. How about if you answer it like this? Someone says, oh, I'm sorry that you got diabetes. And you go, you know what? I'm not sorry for having that. I am a better athlete now because of the diabetes rather than despite it. Allahu Akbar. So diabetes was the wake-up call. 
you need to do something about your physique, be healthy. And then you hit the ground running and going to the gym and working out on your eating habits. Not become a couch potato when you give in, just like I see a Muslim, subhanAllah, younger than me, suffering from diabetes and take this, and it affects the life from every angle. The sexual appetite decreases or dies, and their love of life, and they become just slaves to medication. Why they have diabetes, subhanAllah. And this is what most of time is because we have treated our body, no energy, no working out, nothing. The body is easily attackable. The moment you hit the ground and you start working out and working out, and guess what? And positivity in uh, the emotions, that's it. The body starts producing positive. I'm diabetes, great. This is my opportunity, man. This is my opportunity, my sister. Look at your lifestyle. Do you guys actually, let's see, between a husband and a wife, why don't you study fitness? Why don't you become fitness and spotters for each other? Instead of letting your wife go fat and unhealthy, and instead of you building that gut, dude, get on the treadmill, work with your wife. What is the danger in that? But Muslims are today, subhanAllah, into thinking negative. And this is very, very sad. Take whatever calamity. Don't regret it. As I said, regret is not a proactive feeling. It's a feeling just like you live in London, just like you live in a borough, let's say in Acton Town. Let's say you live in this street here. Well, your regret lives in a country called disappointment, in a city called sorrow, and in a, in a country or a street or whatever called remorse. Get out of the town. It ain't no place for you. Go somewhere else. Go to something where, well, this is what has happened. I'm going to learn from it and guess I'm going to become the best of it. My sister, if you marry the dude that you think I shouldn't have married him, guess what? Deal with it. You can work on that and you can reverse the process and he can become the hunk, the dude, the sexiest man in town for you. And you, my brother, instead of looking at your wife growing sideways, becoming fat and hard to move, why don't you introduce fitness and start with her slowly? I'll help you develop a plan. Subhanallah. Let me tell you guys in the competition and people that came to my house, they saw the trophy. In a United States competition in fitness, I ranked third in California and 10th in the United States. Yes. Subhanallah. Allah, you Muslims, I don't know why. If I told this to the non-Muslims, I've already made a few seminars in health and nutrition. But you Muslims, I don't know. Why are we like this? A question. Why are we like this? I leave to you to answer. Here is a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa because we must bless this saying with a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and also an ayah. In Surah Ibrahim alayhi salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim, inna allaha la yughayyiru ma bi qawmin hatta yughayyiru ma bi anfusihim. In the nearest translation to the meaning is that Allah will not change the status of a people or a person until they change themselves which we teach non-Muslims today as for things to change, you've got to change. The definition of madness in the Chinese dictionary is doing always the same thing and expecting different results. Look at yourself. You always live the same lifestyle. You always pray the same way. You always read the Quran the same way. You always eat the same way. You always drink the same way. You always dress the same way and you expect different results. Hello. Time to wake up. And in the hadith, again, in reported by Sahih Muslim, Rasulullah sallallahu gives us, Wallahi al-Azim, I can hold a whole seminar about these things, but I'll share with you in these few words. Al-Mu'min al-Qawi khayrun wa ahabbu ila Allah min al-Mu'min al-Da'if wa fi kullin khayr. The strong believer is in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala better than the weak believer. And in both, there is goodness. And obviously, my dear brothers and my sisters, the goodness in the strong outweighs that in the weak by lots, which means Allah loves the strong believer. Strong believer in every context of the strong. Physically strong, emotionally strong, planning your life strong, acting Islam strong, being to mankind strong, every single thing that you do has to have something, is time strong. I eat, time strong, healthy. I sleep, time strong, beautiful sleep. 
I help people, time strong. I do that, and, and you get the idea. And then Rasulullah said a couple of beautiful things. He goes, أحرص على ما ينفعك واستعين بالله ولا تعجز. Look at the Arabic, subhanallah. أحرص. When I looked at the English translation, they say uh, cherish, and they give all nonsense words because they do not give the real meaning of أحرص. In the Arabic or in the Quran, الحرص is being greedy. So what Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم is telling us is this. Get very greedy in searching what benefits you. Allahu Akbar. If health is going to benefit me, I get very greedy. I don't have time to waste in anything else. I get healthy. When I do my salat, I become very greedy. You know when you are greedy, you want to eat yourself, use your money by yourself, everything's by yourself. It's me, 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 me. Well, do it. Be very greedy in Islam first and in life. And being greedy in Islam means you share with other people. But I'm talking here about what serves your cause of being on earth very well. And then the Rasulullah says, وَاسْتَعِنْ بِاللَّهِ And ask Allah to help you. Don't sit on your butt with crossed arms and crossed legs and expect Allah to do the job for you. Allah has rebuked this of the children of Israel when they said to Musa, اِذْهَبْ أَنْتَ وَرَبُّكَ فَقَاتِلَا إِنَّا هَا هُنَا قَاعِدُونَ The children of Israel got to Jerusalem and they were just there looking at it. The command was just stand up and walk into the city and you will conquer the city. The children of Israel turned to Moses and said, Moses, Musa, go you and your Rabb and your God, fight for us. We are here waiting. When you win the battle, we'll come in. Allah cursed them and th- sent them to the desert for 40 years. My sister, if your marriage sucks, big deal. My brother, if the sexiness of your wife has gone and if your marriage sucks, big deal. Don't be like the children of Israel. Sit on your butt and send uh, whoever you send and Allah to do the job for you. Go and do it. Otherwise, Allah is going to send you in 40 years, 40 months, 40 hours in the desert of punishment. And then, وَلَا تَعْجِزِ Al-ajiz comes from al-ajuz. is someone who is old and can't do what they want. There is, here is a great message from Allah. Don't be a loser. Since you don't know that you are going to fail or not, since you have started to win, go ahead and go for it. Don't let, inshallah, knock you down. A lot of people are criminals. Muslims I'm talking about. They are criminals when it comes to inshallah. I will buy a car, inshallah. I.e., I intend to buy the car, but in my heart, Allah doesn't want it to happen. But should he let it happen, I will do it. This is absolutely criminal to think like that. Absolutely criminal. I am going to take a course and succeed, inshallah. I.e., I'm doomed to failure. But should Allah will something different, I will pass. You are a murderer. You are a criminal thinking like that. Insha'Allah, as I said before, is the bismillah, is being polite by Allah, and that's the first step in an action. It's when you intend to do something, you go, inshallah, and you go, hit it right where it hurts, 100%, give it your 100%, and Allah will give you the result. Then Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi says, in this life, as you go up and down, and you try your best, in asabaka shay'un, and if something hits you, of a calamity, or a failure, or you lose money, or your marriage is not working properly, فَلَا تَقُلْ Don't you ever say, لَوْ إِنِّي فَعَلْتُ If I had done different, my result would have been this and this. You know what? If I had married my sweetheart of the high school, my life would be a lot better. And if I had married that girl before this woman, if I had done this, if I had done that, if I did, if I, you know what? If I married that man who came first, not this husband here, if I did, all these ifs, what are they, what do they do? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa tell you what they do. فَإِنَّ لَوْ Because if opens, تَفْتَحْ عَمَلُ الشَّيْطَانِ Opens the work of shaitan. Let's say I decided to marry X or do the job. That job, I had two jobs and I jo- job A, job B and I took job A. And then after a few months it turned out that job A is really not what I wanted. It's not what I did. 
Then you start to say, you know what? If I took the other job, if I married the other person, if I didn't do this, this would have been. What does the shaitan do? He goes, ha, ha, there you go. I caught a loser. Who is this loser? The regretful person who lives in the disappointment, who lives in the sorrow, who lives in the remorse, the person who lives in a no proactive feeling. Well, let me pull his leg. How many of you are so miserable today because of the ifs and ifs and ifs? If I did this, why did, if I did this, it would have been this. You know what? It's true, you made a mistake. Move on. Don't give your life to a shaitan. Shaitan is very clever. He knows what ails you. He will come to you and he goes, you know what? You married this one and you didn't marry the other one. Look at this one today. They don't even do what you want. A shaitan lives with you 24 hours a day. You sleep and he doesn't sleep. He knows how you think and he knows everything. Subhanallah. And then what he does, he opens. You know when you want to take advantage of someone and give them like bad things, you start mucking them up and messing them around? Well, shaitan, as soon as you give him the opportunity, he will drag you into the past and you waste your life thinking, ha, oh, I should have done this and I should have done that. The solution is, as Rasulullah sallam, be greedy. Take your current situation like the diabetes. Let's see. I am living with my in-laws. My husband is little, so that is your problem. Instead of going, I shouldn't have accepted him when he said, let's live with the unlaws. I shouldn't have done this. Well, this is the ifs. Say, okay, I live with my in-laws. How can I become a better person by using this and move on? What is the solution? Move out. How do you move out? Subhanallah, you are in England. Work out, ask questions, study, do something. And when you take your calamity and you work on, you will strongly and really, really move forward because Allah has promised in the Quran, Inna ma'al usri yusran. Inna ma'al usri yusran. With every calamity, there is easiness. With the same calamity, another easiness. Which each problem that you get right now, you have two solutions. Why do you concentrate on the problem and forget the solutions? I don't understand that. I really don't. So let me recap my thought here. Regret is not a proactive feeling. It's a feeling that lives in the disappointment, in the sorrow, and in the remorse department. Regret is only a wish that you live in the past that things would have been different. But you know what? You can't change that. Move out and move on. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help you get as much as possible from this pep talk because it's a life changer if you put it into practice. And if you're going to listen just to be educated, I feel sorry for you from here until the United, uh, until the United States. But anyway, Allah knows more. To join this group, please send me a message with your name at 078 Seven six four zero eight seven three five. If you have anything that you'd like me to help you with, just get in touch and I'll do my very best. Okay, I love you all for the sake of Allah. Again, this is your brother Abdul Salam, and you wonderful people, get out of the regret zone and do it now. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.